my friend, Michael Hayden, and we're talking about AI today. You guys know we've been talking about AI a lot lately. Uh, <laughs> and you guys know I'm doing this AI summit coming up here pretty soon, May 24th and 25th. It's going to be online. And for this summit, I reached out to some of my favorite people who are doing things in AI. And Mike was one of those people. I saw that Mike was really contributing a lot in the different Facebook groups that I'm in. And he created these really cool uh, Google Sheets that do some really awesome things utilizing AI. So I reached out to Mike and asked him if he wouldn't mind speaking at the summit and teaching all of us how we can do what he does uh, to grow our businesses, create more awesome content, stuff like that. So I'm so excited to have you, Mike. Welcome. And why don't you tell everybody a little bit about you and how you got into AI? Yeah, cool. Yeah, thank you. It's great to be here. Um, so I worked initially before AI kind of worked in marketing Google Ads for 15 years. Um, Google Ads kind of one of the more technical types of marketing. So there was a lot you could automate using scripts, Google Ads scripts and stuff like that. Um, so always programmed as well and was always interested in AI more as a hobby. Um, same with programming, really used it a little bit to automate things in the kind of day job and then did most of it as a hobby and um, some of the hobby stuff I did I kind of did it like a Starcraft bot which as part of a little competition against my brother who could make the best Starcraft bot um, I did a rock paper scissors bot and entered that into a competition on Kaggle which is like a machine learning website and um, so that was a lot of fun as well I think um, 1,600 different people <laughs> entered their bots into the into the competition <laughs> and it was like a league table so your bot would play like a thousand games of rock paper scissors against another bot at like high speed and if you won you'd move up the table and that was a lot of fun so but lots of lots of different projects like that um, and then ChatGPT came out and I was just kind of amazed and blown away by that. And I was kind of using it. I couldn't believe how good it was. Um, it was literally, I think, was one night where I just kind of lay there till like five o'clock in the morning just thinking about it. I was just so obsessed with it when it first came out. Um, and then I was thinking about how can I use this you know, to make it more practical and use it within the business, um, use it to actually do your work for you, um, how to kind of do things in bulk. And so um, the best way I could think of to do it um, which I'm going to talk about on my talk um, is to integrate it with Google Sheets. Um, so yeah, the Sheets are the online, so um, they have access to the internet. They can talk to ChatGPT. They can talk to other AI models as well, like Dali and things like that. And um, the Sheets can obviously store data within the table. And um, they connect to lots of other things as well, which people don't realize. So you can add code to your Sheets. Um, or download other people's code and add that <laughs> if you're not a programmer. Um, you can link them to Gmail and all of the Google apps. So you can send emails from the sheets um, using code and lots of other things. Um, so there's actually quite a lot. So you can use the sheets as kind of a quick and easy way to pull lots of things together. And that kind of allows you to do things in bulk. And that's really what I've been focusing on is you know how to get it to do as much as possible. And I've been using it for things like, uh, I've got one, a sheet that will write an entire nonfiction book for you. Uh, which is good. So a lot of a lot of people have used that to publish books on Amazon, and the books are okay. They're not bad. Uh, so it's very good. Gets a first draft out there very quickly, and then we've got ones that write website content in bulk, ones that write social media posts, uh, and I've done kind of custom tools for people as well, where someone will have like a really specific business case. We're doing one at the moment that um, designs exams for students. Um, based around their, um, it's for a lady in Australia, so it's based around their, ChatGPT seems to just know everything, so it already knows all about the criteria for this particular exam body in Australia that you know, I, I'd never heard of, um, but it knows their exams, it knows the criteria, and it's, it's a way of like, putting exams together in bulk in a very specific format for their students that cover all, all of the kind of syllabus, so that's a very particular example of how you can use it. You can use it for many, many things, basically. Um, yeah, and that's what I've been doing kind of the past kind of four months since I kind of discovered ChatGPT <laughs> and I became love, obsessed with it. I love that. I think it's so cool. You know, I, I did the same thing the minute I started playing around with ChatGPT. I just was like obsessed with it and I couldn't stop going back to it. And then the combination of that and the imagery tools and everything, it just blew my mind that things that were taking me years to develop, I developed in a weekend. I just, I couldn't, I couldn't stop. I was like, you're like up all night thinking about it. Like yeah. I couldn't wait. I was trying to like, you know, 
no, Amy, don't work on it right now. You can, you can work on it in the morning, but <laughs> I'd get up first thing in the morning, make my coffee on the weekend and just like start, you know, either from my phone with Discord and with ChatGPT on my phone, you know, or then moving to my computer and doing different things. So I'm excited for you to kind of show us the inner workings. It sounds like Google Sheets overall, like you said, it's connected to the internet. Um, there's so many different things that you can do with it, not only with ChatGPT, but with image generation and different things. And what you've done, these sheets that you've created, and some of them are completely free for people to download. Um, you put together a website called autosheets.ai. People can go and check that out. Um, but you know, you're going to be showing us at the summit step-by-step step how to do something like that, how to use our own sheet, um, how to create our own sheet for our own purposes. How do you put these things together? So, and it's not as hard as people think. You know, you don't have to be a programmer. You don't have to understand code. You just be able, need to be able to follow some instructions and get some help along the way from AI. So, so excited to have you at the summit and have you showing people how to do this. I think whether they are using it for their personal uh, life to make their personal life easier, or they're using it in their business, there's so many uses for it, or using it for their kids, household management, so many different things that you can do uh, to make your life easier. So excited to have you, Michael, I can't wait. Um, I guess we'll end it with uh, a tip. Do you have a tip, a quick tip that uh, people can utilize to get started with AI right now? Yeah, yeah. If you're using ChatGPT and say you're not quite getting the, the output that you hope for, um, the thing a lot of people don't do is, is they don't realize that you can give it examples that learns really, really quickly from the examples. Uh, because of the way it works, it's almost like a calculator for language in a way. If you give it an example, it learns a lot. It learns about how long the answer should be, the, the choice of words, the tonality, um, the sentiments and all sorts. So um, there's a graph you, you may have seen floating around on Facebook. It shows how well ChatGPT or GPT-4 did on different exams in the US. So it gave it loads of exams. They said it did better than 90% of students. And well, on all of them, they gave it examples for every question. So it multi-shot. So anywhere from actually five to 25 examples they gave it, which is cheating a little bit because that's not how the students don't get that <laughs> when they're doing it. Um, but it's a good example of what it can do when you give it examples. So um, especially when if you're looking to do stuff in bulk, if you have that prompt that you always use and it has, you know, a few examples in the prompt and then you ask it the actual thing you want it to do. So it's like come up with another social media post like these posts and you, but you give it, but this time it's on this topic and um, it will kind of, it will use that instantly and it will give you the output and you've got more control of the format as well. And um, you can do it, you can do all sorts. You can give it an example of the examples wrapped in HTML code. For example, if you want to put it on your website and um, it will give you it in HTML. If you use something more technical, so you can use, um, JSON format of using it in programming. You can use schema, which is used to kind of get you higher up on Google. <laughs> um, whatever example you give it, it will literally just it'll run with it basically and it will it'll give you the same output. So yeah, that's my number one tip <laughs> for people. That's a really great tip. You know, I actually used that to create some social media posts for our speakers to use. Uh, what I did is I took the social media post that my marketing team put together for Amazing at Home for the AI Summit, and I fed those into ChatGPT. And I said, I explained the situation. I said, I'm hosting a summit. I have some speakers. I want to give them some content that they can post. But right now, all of my posts are for my company as the host of the summit. So I pasted them in, I said, I'm going to give you my posts to give you an idea. And I want you to rewrite these posts from the speaker's perspective, including um, you know, emojis and hashtags. And so that's what I did. I just copied those in and then uh, ChatGPT rewrote all of them uh, from a speaker's perspective. And they were pretty good the first time. Like, I think I had to tweak one or two words and everything else was perfect because it was already in our voice, already in kind of the tonality that we want. Uh, and then what I did once it had those examples is that I said, I'd like two or three more posts. Could you come up, use the examples that you have already, come up with two or three more posts that I could use. So that's a great example of how people can feed in examples. They can say, you know, here's some posts that I have 
create some more, or here's some posts that I have, write them from a different perspective. Uh, another thing that I did is um, I asked it to come up with fun uh, quotes that would be from a cat uh, that, you know, cause I have a cat brand. So I was like, come up with some funny quotes that a cat would be saying to a human in a sarcastic tone. And then I gave it some examples of, you know, some funny things that I think are funny that, you know, people have done, you know, memes that I thought were funny across the internet. And it came up with the most clever, funniest quotes. And then I turned those into social media posts. I said, okay, now recommend the titles and text for the social media post and also recommend the image. And I just yeah. put the description of the image into an AI image generation tool and came up with some really funny uh, looking cats <laughs> to yeah. use for yeah, social good. media. Yeah, so that's, that's a good idea for the tool. We could do a cat meme tool. <laughs> the cat memes in bulk. That's a good idea. Yes, yes. Are you, can you build that one for me, Michael? That'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> Next on my list. <laughs> Yeah, I actually got it to do pictures of cute dogs yesterday as far as I was just testing it and it was really good. See, when those people sometimes they don't turn out that well, you get the weird fingers and stuff like that. But the dogs actually look really good. They did it seems to be better drawing dogs than people as a, some sort of little bias in the AI, like likes dogs more of an animal person, maybe. <laughs> You know, and I think sometimes if you use the weird, if you use different prompts, it also messes up the animals. <laughs> so it's like, okay, why does that cat have hands? <laughs> why is that dog? Why is that dog wearing a suit and tie? I'm confused. But you know, it's it's still pretty awesome. And as we learn how to prompt it and learn how to work with it a little bit more, we can really you know improve our decrease our workload and improve our output. So amazing tip today. I'm so glad that we got to nerd out over this. Everyone, I hope that you'll join us at the summit. It is uh, 24 and 25 May. It's virtual, so you don't have an excuse if it's not in your time zone. You're going to get the replays afterwards. And we have 16 experts, just like Mike here, um, that are going to be at the summit and doing some really, really awesome in-depth workshops for you so that you can learn how to get this stuff moving in your business or your personal life right now. And you can go to amazingathome.com forward slash AI. And Mike has a code for you to save $50 on your ticket. And so his code is Mike AI, and you can use that. Uh, oh, sorry. It's Michael AI. Uh, you can use that to save $50 on your ticket. And we hope to see you guys at the summit. Get your tickets now because early bird pricing is in effect right now. So not only are you saving on your ticket price, you're also able to use that coupon code and get that awesome discount stat going for you. And we hope to see you guys there. Come hang out with me and Mike. We're going to have fun. We're going to nerd out over all the cool things that we can do. And uh, thanks again, Mike, for being here. Yeah, thank you. Looking forward to it. Everybody have a great day. Bye.